Okay, so you either have a mace shield or a staff. Firebrand class is a reactionary class. It is not preemptive, and it's only for mostly sustain and blocking. Uh, your most valuable tool would be Aegis. Anyone that would, tells you otherwise, they're an idiot. Um, you have three utilities that are really important. Now, the last utility is going to be up to you, but... Uh, I'm, I'm just using the one that was on our, our FA build sheet. I'm using this a meta battle The first one. mantra is your heal. The second mantra is to throw some regen and remove conditions. It acts as a Condi cleanse. And then the last mantra is the very important one. This will break stuns from other allies. So if they get stunned or locked into an AoE well, AoE damage, you have to release them. This works on the SMC Lord. Um, this works on all lords. This works on thieves, especially if you're petrified. Uh, I can't stress how important that last mantra is. Uh, quick question about mantras. Uh, Hold your questions. Sure. Uh, this stance is stand your ground. It's a shout. It's very important. We're going to use this before we engage an enemy. Um, People usually let you know if you don't have it up when they say, I don't have stab, and they're just engaged, or you see them being bounced around on the ground. Um, it's very important to activate this shout before, before we engage, okay? It's no good after we get stunned. It has to be activated before. Now for the last two, they are situational. Um, the Signet of Mercy allows you to heal or res one ally that's on the ground. I use this constantly when I'm running with Shrouded. Um, I usually don't have enough time to res two people at once, so I hit one with the Signet and I go ahead and res the other. I usually wait until Atros has called his Illusion of Life before I use this. If you use it on an enemy and then Atros goes ahead and illusions somebody, it's useless. So please be aware of that. Um, hollowed ground is when we fight very big zerks. You're not going to have time to res. People are going to die and get doubled down very, very fast, and there won't be enough time to use your signet. So hollowed ground is usually the better option. Let's go over the weapon skills. Now you have the mace and shield; they're to be used together. Um, the staff is situational and i'm leaning towards situational because if you're an expert you'll go ahead and use that axe and if you're familiar with firebrand but not very good i recommend you use the staff when we use the staff there are two main skills that you're going to use when you engage so empowers he'll call for empowers if they don't you'll empower anyway when we stack at least i hope you do um and the line the line of warding is very important Typically, I wait until the bubble has been dropped to drop this line. If you don't drop this line, you're letting people run around the map for engagement without being knocked over. Um, this is really good for separating the backline fighters from the frontline fighters. And as you use it, you'll see that that tiny little line can actually separate spellcasters from frontline fighters. Half the Zerg will be separated, and then it's easier for us to bomb them or pick them apart. So again, you want to use the line in the bubble. And if not, if there is no bubble, use the line before they engage you. For the mace and shield, it's a bit tricky. Um, you are to switch to this weapon after you've empowered or dropped your line immediately. The staff is not a combat weapon. I want you to be 90% always in mace and shield. Now the mace and the shield have a particular uh, set of locking skills that you can use in rotation but for projectiles you'll use the shield of absorption which is this one activate it again for a quick heal hmm. you forgot one staff skill by the way zoto the one that we call constantly your staff two is a blast finisher oh, blasting right yeah yeah for stealth blast and stuff use this one for blasting yeah um the Shield of Judgment is an, uh, it's like your mantras. It shoots in a cone ahead of you. This gives everyone Aegis. Aegis is very important. I'd like you to have this up as we engage. Typically, you'll hit stand your ground and then fire that off to protect the boon 
because the first thing that we do get hit with is usually a boon strip. The Aegis will protect the boons. After you've used that and we're engaging the enemy, you have to use this nice fancy shield skill. It's number three. Uh, it doesn't do much except for when you get hit, and that's what you're really counting on. So as you move with the tag through the bomb or whatever, you're going to get hit, and as soon as you get hit, that shield bounces off of you and hits all of your allies and your substore, and it gives them ages again. And protection. Technically, you want to bounce between 5, 4, and 3 quite a bit. When we're hunkering, you, you want to use 2 just for that extra heal. The number 1 is for cleaving, uh, but that's situational as well. Are there any questions on the skills or utilities so far? Uh, so I have a, a question about mantras specifically, uh, which is uh, in raids, I know, uh, I play Condi Quick Brand, and you're not supposed to exhaust your mantras. You're supposed to let go down to one and then let them recharge. I know sometimes you situationally you're going to have to use them in like a, an engagement, but you say in general, do you want to go through all of them or do you want to only go down to one and then let them recharge naturally? That's uh, player discretion. Um, I typically As... use all of my mantras uh, when I'm in the shit. I kind of want to cycle through my last mantra. Uh, mantra of Liberation. So you want to go all the I, way down, you mean? I usually push it until it's on cooldown. Gotcha. As a commander, I would definitely say don't hold because... The thing about raids is that you don't take damage. No, like, I'm aware. The amount of the amount of pressure and the amount of uptime in raids is so little that you don't want to put it on full cooldown. Mm -hmm. But the very last charge, if you look at them, truly look at them. Yeah, they're they're a lot more power powerful. Yeah, five Condi cleanse, five boon, you know, five conversions, five stacks of staff. You know that itself is enough to say, okay, yes, put it on cooldown. But, you know, don't just spam, 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 spam. You know, use them sparingly, like Zodox is saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no point in uh, adding Aegis again if you've already used it. And you want players to actually take that hit so you can reapply it. Mm -hmm. what, if we're, what if we're expecting a long, drawn-out fight? Like, if we're sieging um, a keep or something? Uh, well, it it's, uh, depends on the player. I mean... Technically, you don't want to be using your mantras just for sustain on Siege and Keeps. If you're taking very heavy damage, it's going to be up to the entire party to heal. Uh, so Scrappers are the primary to... healing supports that we use? You'll be surprised at the Condi Cleanses. It feels like I'm always Condi Cleansing, but uh, as the statistics show in the World vs. World logs, the Scrapper is the primary healer. So, yeah, okay, so that actually flows into my next question about Kondi Cleanses. Um, I will often prioritize resistance over the direct cleanse just to let the scrapper convert the boons, because, you know, me being a scrapper, like, I want to be converting all the time. What is the situation, what is the ideal situation to use? Uh... To use resistance? Is it resistance no, versus a um, mantra of lore, opening passage. What, because like that cleanses right you cleanse two uh in a cone at 450 range what's the situation to use that over resistance because I, I usually you know i like to let the scrapper convert rather than cleanse i would say uh, wait to hold that question until after you've gone through your virtues though Dox. okay yeah excuse um, me you're gonna have to watch the party um <clears throat> Like I said, the Firebrand is a reactionary class, and so one of the things that depend on this is watching your Scrapper. And if you do have a healing Scrapper, and they aren't very cleansing the abilities, or maybe they're too far ahead, um, it's, it's going to be up to you whether you want to cleanse that or not. Uh, if I get crippled, or if I see the party chilled, I'll use it right away. Okay, so so you're looking at the Condies that you have, because Cripple and Chill are... A big deal they're right. devastating to the case but yeah okay yeah i'll hold the rest of my questions on that um, are there any other questions on utilities or skills 
uh, one more quick one is stuff like uh, obviously when we're doing the engage you, you talked about using shield 4 and mace 3 in like a specific order uh, like when we're actually in an engagement should we just be using those basically on cooldown there is no specific order but you will be rotating between these three they're the most important the staff is not a combat weapon no of course I, I, I'm just saying is, the, is there like a there's so there's no threshing order you basically just want us to use 3, 4, 5 on, on cooldown essentially or like Maybe five less so because it's longer, but uh, yeah, the five will protect your team or sub squad from most projectiles and pulls. Um, four gives Aegis and as well as three. So if you're taking a lot of hits, maybe use five for projectiles and then switch to three. And then as you uh, buying time or just want to give your team protection, go ahead and use four. Okay. If you're taking hits from melee, I would use four right away and three. And then I would hold five. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over the books now, if you didn't have anything else to add. The books, Tome of Justice, Tome of Resolve, and Tome of Courage. We're going to start with Tome of Justice. The situation is this. Um, he, the commander has called for empowers, and we've pushed into the enemy, and he's dropped the bubble, and now it's time to CC. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to drop 4, and then you're going to press 5. So your sub-squad is going to get fire damage added to their irregular attacks, or whatever skills, and then you're going to press 3. And you're going to use 3, especially when the bubble has been dropped, uh, to get off that extra CC because the enemy team has no boons. If you're conditioned damage, then I suppose you could spam 1 and 2. Can I add one thing to this? Sure. Uh, three can be used to pull people off walls as well. Uh, this is a pull wall. And yeah, it's got a 9 the range, that's pretty nice. Should we... I mean... Fire field is really good. If you switch to your staff right after you throw it, you can actually blast that too. Uh, should we be... Should we be camping this book after we go through the four, five, three? Like, should we wait for the? No, after you've used your CCs, um, after you've dropped the fire fuel, you're giving everyone. Bring up the virtue of resolve. Um, <laughs> you have, oh. Again, number four is also a field. Nah, uh, number three is also really good um, to throw into the mix for healing. You're gonna do this when the commander calls for heals. So go ahead and drop number five, then press four, and press three. It's usually going in this five, rotation. Four, three. If someone's taken a lot of hit and you want to individually heal them, just spam one. If you're taking uh, a lot of condies, in this situation, you can switch to the book and spam two. This will remove some conditions. But this is not a holy grace save from getting Conti down by any means. This is just a band-aid. So if you have to use two, at the very least, at least drop a healing field and then press it. It's very weak on its own. Just activating the virtue of courage, uh, you're going to get Aegis and retaliation and protection. I got stabbed too. Is that supposed to happen? Yeah. Okay. You might be running a slightly different variant. Yeah, I, I grabbed the one off of our build sheet that's pinned. Running indomitable courage. That so the situation courage. is this. Uh, no. You've opened up three, or sorry, book three. Um, and you're going to use number three to protect siege. So go ahead and use that one. It's a bubble, just like your shield uh, for the shield maze combo on the weapons. Which tome? It's courage. Tome number three. Tome three. Virtue of courage. Okay. Uh, it's a regular bubble. It reflects projectiles also, and it can be used many times. Um, when you're in the Zerg, you're going to be pressing five. Five is Aegis. This is a very important skill. You don't want to spam this. Obviously, there's a cooldown to stop you from doing that, so that's good. But uh, you don't want to switch from this book willingly. Uh, it's not a throwaway book. You need to use these skills. So five is very important. Number four is a field that gives you all resistance. Um, this 
is used in situations where the commander is pushing and the floor is covered in red shit. <laughs> okay, you want to use this and players will walk over it and get as little condition damage as they possibly can. Don't forget to hit 5 while you're waiting for that to cool down. Yeah, when you've uh, crossed the AoEs, you're going to run into the enemy group and you're doing melee damage or whatnot, plus two. It's going to take uh, one stab off the enemy, and it usually gets those spellcasters in the back that don't have it. They're, they're going to fuck up their rotation, and obviously it's going to be better to CC them when there's a bubble, but if there is none, just give it your best shot. Two is a taunt. You can taunt lords, break lords with this. Uh, you can actually break zergs with this by just running into the back line and taunting all the other casters. Mm -hmm. So it's very useful too when you close that distance. Is the retail from it relevant at all? Like something to prioritize, or is more just like a, a consolation bonus prize? If you're getting shit on, absolutely, it's very useful. But if you're not, it's whatever. So do you, so do you... The main thing to take away from this is that these are reactionary. You do not preemptively use these at any time unless you're very sure that you're going to be taking that kind of damage. Um, most of these skills hit in a cone. So if your sub squad is behind you and you fire off a cone, nobody is going to head it. Nobody's going to get the benefits. Nobody's going to receive healing. No one's going to get Aegis. You've got to be behind your sub squad at all times. Can I ask a quick question on Tome of Courage? Yes. Do you use one at all for the little stab, or is it not worth it? You can to catch up. Uh, I usually use it for running down and uh, if players are having trouble running down and rangers are using a whole bunch of CCs and I just fire it off to give people that stat. It is very good when you're in a bind. Sure. Let's just run through a situation. So what are the three best skills to use on the mace shield? I know there's going to be a test. Three, four, and five. <laughs> what? Are we getting quiz? Yeah. Very yeah, good. The... How much does this count for Yay. our final grade? <laughs> What's the percentage of, of uh, the semesters this one? I didn't, I didn't get the curriculum. What get... does skill number two do on the staff? That's uh, a blast, blast finisher. finisher. Yes, blast. it is a blast. Blast dealt with this. What does number four do? It's empower. 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 If you see Atros or Banana Cat stacking, don't Back be tight. an idiot. Back Fucking tight. use Empower. Not. Line my line. Lines forward. Lining. Projectiles, number five. Shield. Number four, move in. And then you use three after, right, as you run through? Yeah. Okay. Now open up your books. Tome of Courage. I, I already I already failed. I did the wrong book. <laughs> <laughs> I had to remember which one Tome of Courage was. Oh, yeah. And this is, the, the, this is four, five. Three first. Four, when five, do three? we use number four in the Tome of Courage? Four and push yeah, forward. have six condies on you. <laughs> it is really bad in the melee. No. no. But when you're pushing forward to run through circles. When we're yeah. running through red circles. When we're Major getting bombed. Says double roll through this bomb. <laughs> when do we use number three? Uh, for uh, siege and projectile uh, hate. Yes, to protect siege. If the enemy has a lot of condies, you can use it on us too. So you, God, that's do, so loud. Yeah, do you, <laughs> if we all do it at the same time, it's pretty loud. Uh, do you use it for, like, bunkers at all? Like, if you're in the book, do you throw it on top of yourselves? Zerg GVG, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, open up book two, Virtual Resolve. What skill do you want to absolutely use first before you fire off any other skill? Four. Five. 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 Why five? Yes. Five. Use number five. Okay. This increases, increases your healing power. So you'll get more out of it. Ah, okay. So this is five four three then. Five four three. Okay. okay. Like, when do we oh, use yeah. book number one? Bubble justice for bubbles for CC, CC bombs bubbles. and stuff. That's right. And so you four dropped five your staff, three, right? right? You swapped out of your staff. You've already dropped your line. You've empowered. The bubble has been dropped. Okay. You're using number three. You do, four, do you use three first? I thought it was four, then five, then three. You can use four. 
can you can use three as uh, as quickly as you can. Um, yeah, three basically CC. You want it, like if you want to hold them there, three is the first thing you use. Okay. And then you follow up with everything else. Okay. Three, four, five. You three, four, can dump five, four then. if you're basically just supercharging the uh, Zerg. We're pirate shipping, right? So dump four. Um, but number five and three will be yeah. most frequently used. So I would I would do something like running in for CC bomb. Three, four, five. Drop the book. Go to whatever else I was doing. Right. Yep. Exactly. The mantras for port and freedom. This one is this one around you or is it in front of you like the other ones are? I think it looks like it, it's around you. Your elite skill. No, that's a cone, right? It's a cone. Okay, so you have to you have to aim the sun break still. It is like yeah. a yes. very small range around you, like tiny, tiny range right next to you, but it, the majority of the range is the cone in front. And Anna Cat, if you want to test on me, you see. Yeah, it says it has a radio. All the, yeah, no, all I, the I see it. I, I think I just had my camera in a way where I wasn't seeing the cone. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so. But now, if I'm behind you, now try it. Yeah, it didn't hit you. So my rule of thumb for the utility here uh, Signet of Mercy or Hollowed Ground. If we're fighting groups less than 20, like between 15 and 10, use Signet of Mercy. If we're fighting groups higher or larger than 20, 25, 30, use Hollowed Ground. I'll say that right now. That works for me. If you're in a GVG, you're, it's dealer's choice. Mm -hmm. And and Signet is one, right? One person? Yes. Only one is person there... two seconds. Is there like a rule for like who it does? Like, say two people go down on top of each other, and you put it on both of them. Like, is there a rule I for? Have, I have no idea. I okay. usually wait till the signet is done, and then I pick up whoever's left. Fair enough. Banana and back on me. And power is Let's four go. seconds. <laughs> Number four. I I, I no, call I call no, empower. Whoever is... dropped that, no. Whoever dropped that, no. Oh yeah, don't drop light fields on, yeah. on tag. Do not let me catch you in a fucking Zerg fight with the staff. You'll drive me nuts. It is not a combat weapon. If you pull it out in a combat situation, you're doing it wrong. You're playing Firebrand wrong. You should rethink your life, go back to school, maybe settle down, play some cribbage, because this game isn't for you. What, what, if, what if the coffin lines? I'll fucking kill you. 40 people on this map and Bomb probably needs 12 supports. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.